My name is Duke Dwayne. I work for the film director, John Cord. He made Stagecoach Lice, which I was in. It was so bad, it's the reason, and that I was also his good drinking mate, that I am now his assistant director. This year, we are in Ireland making The Traitor. It is about an Irish drunk named Paddy O'Cara, who betrayed his people for a drink. What is unique about this film is that the two lead actors are played by the traitor's actual daughter, Maureen O'Cara, and son, Roddy. With that ugly background, my job was to prepare Roddy and Maureen for the camera. It was my big break. Seeing Marino Cara for the first time stunned me. She was a red-headed, green-eyed, fiery beauty. But to get the best performance out of her, Mr. Kaur treated her like crap. He wanted her to be insecure in her scenes. So he threatened her constantly that she could easily be replaced. To make this point even stronger, he kept on the set Anna McPhee, the local drunken whore. Whenever Maureen gave a poor reading, Anna would step in and do her lines. Why are they doing it? They need the money desperately. For what their father did, they can't get any work in the village. To stay in their cheap cottage, Maureen even agreed to marry Victor McClash Jr., the town loan shark and lecherous son of her father's accuser. Victor Sr. gave the incriminating evidence that caused her father to hang himself. While she could stand up to the best of them, her brother was fragile. He was made fun of and bullied by everyone. the unsympathetic job of trying to get a heartbreaking performance out of the kid, knowing full well he would come out of this even more psychologically damaged. The first thing I had to do with Roddy was to get him to say degrading things about his father. His dialogue went like this. I have a treacherous father. For a shot of whiskey, he would sell his soul to the devil. Maureen was furious when we teach him such lines. She demanded it be rewritten. Upset, she went to the director. He quickly put her in her place. She wanted to get out of her miserable situation. He told her he could help her make her a great movie star. Then she would hold the winning card. 
she wouldn't have to marry Victor McLean Jr. to have a home for her brother. Anna can tell you all her nights with him. From then on, Marie tried her best to give Cord the performance he sought. I knew I needed to help Roddy first. I then started talking secretly to him. I would have to gain his confidence. Slowly, Boreen picked up on the change my influence had on her brother. He was becoming more assured when I told him what I was going to do. When she tried to find out why he was no longer in me, a little slow, he just smiled. Finally, the big day came. Cor was going to shoot the scene where Roddy would be teased and humiliated publicly by the villagers for his father's treachery. To make sure Claude would not be there to direct it, I had Anna get him drunk and bed him so that he would not be fit to work on the set the next morning. the mob on the set come out instead of humiliating the boy, screaming that the real killer was Victor McClash, Sr. Villagers went wild with joy when he was portrayed as the murderer. They hated his son. The loan shark was taking financial advantage of them. Victor was furious. He belted the hell out of me. and kissed me as I never had been kissed before. But with no choice but to use what I shot, John Cord went back to Hollywood to edit the film. It became his greatest work, outdoing the noisy man. With Cord at her side, Anna became Hollywood's hottest hostess. For a shot of whiskey, Victor could only get work cleaning bar rooms and by panhandling. <laughs> 